Well, hello. Welcome to what I hope will be quite an interesting little video of which the topic of will be these two little Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers here. I've had these for, must be about six months now, and I'm not overly impressed with them. Um, let's start off with the build quality. Um, the build quality of them is actually phenomenal. They're all made of a wonderful... I don't know, some sort of aluminium type case, um, which in general just feels really good. They've got some weight to them. They're nicely cushioned on the back. Um, the speaker terminals on the back are good. And on the side with the power pack, um, all the components generally seem of really nice quality. Um, the problem is with the actual sound quality of these. Um... Like I know what sort of audience that they're intended for, but when I first heard them for anything other than video games, um, I thought the sound was really, really quite poor. Um, if you love thumping bass and not much else, um, these are great for you. Uh, uh, I, I just found that the sound that I got from these was very flat. Um, there really wasn't much clarity at all to the sound um, so I did a little bit of research and I looked in more in depth into the speakers and particularly the crossovers because by all means as I say these speakers are more tended towards you know more I guess the uh, the low end sort of PC gamer range you know love bass love a bit of spatial sound etc um but I had a look at, a little bit more in depth into the guts of these, and the crossovers in particular disappointed me. The power pack on this, uh, the active amplifier, by all means, was actually supposedly quite uh, impressive for its size. Um, but the crossovers I felt very let down by because the insides of both of these, as you'll see in a sec, um, well, I'll show you. Let me open up the back and we'll take a look at the guts of these. Okay, the screws on the booty of one of these removed. If we pop it off, as you'll see, inside, you see there's some wires. And there's also a lot of, um, let's see if I can uh, angle my camera down without knocking you all out. You'll see we've got some nice um, sound insulation material here. Um, generally quite nice, it's not angel hair by an extent. But if we, I'll pull this out to make it more easily viewable. If we take a deep dive in here, that's the best way to get this out. Yes, there we go. Aha. You'll see the uh, two immediate fenders, offenders in my eyes. Um, what we got here in the crossover, um, well, we've got a couple of, an inductor there. I'm going to assume that's another inductor there. We've got a little concrete resistor there. But these are the two main offending components um, to the ears of any um, audio guru. We've got here a little 4.7 microfarad 100 volt polyester capacitor. Now, there's a lot of snobbery in the audio world about what makes a good crossover capacitor. And there are loads of electrical characteristics you can get into. You can get into the dielectric material of the capacitor, the power factor of it, the insulation resistance, the, the lead material, etc., etc. Um, but in general, the audio community does seem quite gathered in the fact that polyester, which is this, and electrolytic, which is this, generally make quite terrible crossover caps. I can't really explain it, but certainly with polyester, um, you lose any of the subtle nuances of the fine detail of sound um, with one of these in the crossover. And electrolytics, um, in my experience, are just terrible. Again, there's a lot of snobbery with this, but this is going to be a little experiment, because I'm going to try swapping these out with two polypropylene capacitors. Now, 
you can use any sort of polypropylene capacity you want. The problem is, in this instance, um, in fact, there are other dielectrics you can use. You could use um, copper or aluminium foil. Um, you could even use a yeah, there's polystyrene capacitors. I, mean, I have no idea how they sound. Um, paper and oil, which is essentially like a craft tissue in quite often vegetable oil. Um, um, but let's say we're going to use two polypropylene capacitors, and there are a wide variety of um, manufacturers for um, polypropylene. Um, I'm going to use uh, two. Yes, I'm going to use two unlabeled Cranium Electronics polypropylene capacitors I've got because I make them. <laughs> but you don't have to use those. You can use any other type of polypropylene capacity you want. The thing you've got to be careful of is um, the size. Um, these I suspect have been used, one, primarily because they are cheap. Um, polyester really is a horrible, horrible material to wind. Um, but metallized, uh, vacuum deposited polyester like that, um, you can just get to such small sizes. It just makes excellent volumetric efficiency, which is, uh, I suppose, what you need when you're dealing with a cab this small. Um, the same goes for the electrolytic bed. Now, again, one could say they probably, they might have used these two capacitors um, to get the audio tonality that they want, but I suspect it's probably a byproduct of um, getting these, uh, primarily because they're cheapness. Uh, electrolytic, it would have been used here because a 12 mic polyester would have been um, quite substantially bigger. Um, obviously, they are um, quite lacking in cab space inside here. It is ridiculously small. I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head. It's 10 centimeters, I guess. Um, so yes, we're going to swap out with these two caps, which is going to be a bit of a struggle because, as you can see, like this one which I've got is a 12 mic. Um, if I just put it in there for reference, well, already you can see that's quite a bit more real estate than that electrolytic. As I said, you can use any manufacturer of polypropylene cap, but ideally you want to make sure you use for a speaker like this where you're short on space, you want to be using um, metallized film and not film and foil. Um, due to size, I'll say um, metallized film is where the the electrode is vacuum deposited on the um, the dielectric. Film and foil is where you've got a, a thin foil layer of the electrode. Um, film and foil will give you a much lower uh, ESR, and probably a better power factor, um, but they are quite a bit a bit beefier than metallized, um, vacuum deposited metallized. Um, ideally, you probably also want to use one as well that's not encapsulated in a case because that's a valuable space. Um, I mean, I've got, as you can see, I've got another um, one of my caps here, Cranium. Let's see, this is a 6.8. This is a 4.7. Um, so yeah, as you can see, a case does take up quite a bit of, get that on the camera extra space but um so there's loads of different manufacturers you can use Yansen they make excellent caps so do um a clarity cap I've got clarity cap here actually <laughs> they do make wonderful caps um Amza they're still going rail cap um the choice is yours as I say um you might struggle I've not actually over overly looked but you'll probably struggle somewhat to get a good quality 100 volt one because the ten the sizes do tend to start at 250 volts um i know that's certainly the case with corinium and clarity cap um seleno mundorf might do 100 volts i'm not sure i'll have a look after this and i'll i'll leave links to possible caps in the videos but the sort of cap you prefer is entirely in the ears of the beholder so without further ado Let's get these balls out. Let's just try some in some polypropylene caps and let's see how they sound. Um, 
I might show the sound a uh, sound test on this video of just me playing some music, but my camera set is very poor, so you're probably not going to hear any substantial difference or audio nuances on the YouTube. So you might just have to take my word for it or try it yourself. Um, as I say, the reason I was not overly keen on these speakers is, look, I know the um, the diameter of the speakers on these are tiny on the um, the main the main motor here and the tweeter. But my main issue is when you listen to anything with a, quite a, a blend of different sounds, as soon as you get singing, some stringed instruments, drum and bass, any sort of low-end notes tend to be drowned out and become quite distorted. So let's see if by swapping in some polypropylene, um, we can add a bit more clarity to that. Well, welcome back. It's a new day, and we've gotten the board out of the speaker cab. Uh, it was a pretty easy job. The board was only held into the outer battlements via two wood screws located at these points. Getting the board out in the light of day really has kind of highlighted to me um, the difficulty that this is going to take to make work for this experiment, because these well the headroom we've got to work with in this cab and this board really is tiny so if this experiment works and you guys try something like this i would really suggest that you don't you try not to go above 250 volt capacitors for this if you're going for polypropylene you really want metallized film uh rather than a glass core or ideally in on themselves and in a wrap and end fill format. Um, you see, we're going to struggle due to the encapsulation of our case, um, adding some extra girth to the unit. But you really don't want to, if you can try and get 100 volts, that's great. I think, again, off the top of my head, LCR, they might do 100 volts in the UK. Um, I'm not sure in the rest of the world. Um, but if you go above 250 volts like we are here um, uh, and go for something like 400 volts, I mean, I've got here, oh my gosh. yeah, I mean, I've got a, I've got a 4.7, 400 volt here from Clarity Cap. As you can see, I mean, it doesn't help that this is encapsulated in a massive acrylic case, but this is the size of the board <laughs> itself. Uh, so you really do not want to be going above, I've got another one for the demonstration here, above 250 volts. And ideally in a wrap and infill format. Um, if you go higher than 250 volts, you're giving yourself extra headroom that you really don't need, but you're just not going to have the space. Um, on the flip side, again, I wouldn't go below 100 volts. I would always stick to... The, the minimum voltage that they've recommended. Um, there'll be a little consequence, I'm sure, for a speaker cab like this. I mean, if you manage to get these capacitors peaking out to 100 volts, I would not want to be in the same room as the poor soul is blaring me his speakers out. Um, same goes to show, if you manage to get 250 volt caps peaking in these tiny little speakers, you'll probably send the speaker cones themselves flying off to the moon. That would be godly loud. Um, after that, we would just be pinned against the wall. Well, in a scene which I'm sure will endear me to no end with audio enthusiasts, I've managed to crowbar the two polypropylene capacitors of the crossover board. As you can see, I've made use of a, a um, red wire and I can't remember the type of solder I'm using. Um, in order to affix it to the board, uh, the end product will reveal all. Okay, with the first speaker done and kicking, let's try and do the second board now. Um, hold on to your horses because I'm sure this will be an equally bigger Bosch job. Uh, you want to be really careful here at the power pack, um, particularly these big beefy electrolytic capacitors right there. Uh, especially if you have them plugged on recently, they will be charged. So take it off, don't touch the board at all, and just uh, put it to one side. Luckily, um, audio engines seem to give you a fairly 
generous length of cable. Um, they are crimped on, so you can just unplug it if you want. Um, we're going to have a hard time here because, as you can see, where the board, try and envisage where that slots in face down, we're going to have the power pack literally right over where, on my other speaker, we have the 12 volt capacitor hanging. So I'm going to have to think of some overtly cunning way of getting the capacitors in there this time and not it being at risk of shorting any of the components on this board. Um, yeah, so stay tuned, but I have a feeling this is going to look pretty bodgy. Yeah, there we go. Second speaker now snugly in place. Let's get the power pack on the back. Hope it fits and see how this sounds. After replacing the polyester and electrolytic capacitors with two polypropylene caps in the 4.7 microfarad and the 12 microfarad position, um, the Audio Engine 2 Pluses sound way better already. Way better. I've been listening to a good chunk of tunage with them. I'm not sure what the burning time for these capacitors would be exactly in this application, but depends how much you believe on all that rubbish anyway um, they just sound wheels better there's a certain magic that happens when you replace polyester or electrolytic capacitors with polypropylene um, I can't quite describe it it just there's so much more scope to the sound it's clearer doesn't distort up in the uh, low bass notes which is excellent um, I can hear all the instruments with clarity um, really would recommend it if you're good with a soldering iron um, <clears throat> and you're not satisfied with the um, sound, I'd recommend giving it a go. Um, yes, nothing else to add really. I might try and do an experiment of changing the prop, perhaps the ceramic capacitors and uh, sorry, maybe changing the ceramic resistor and perhaps the two inductors. Um, I find they tend to have less difference, but maybe. Maybe we'll give it a go. Maybe I'll just um, print off a little uh, PCB of my own and try whacking that in um, my own setup and seeing how it goes. One thing I would recommend though is whatever surface you're doing on, make sure um, you sort of tape these off before you put some paper on because I can see already I've managed to get a scratch there, which is going to annoy me. I'll have to get the uh, resin polish out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it somewhat helpful. Um, yeah, as I say, conclusion. They sound really, really good now with um, the polypropylene capacitors in. I'll try and leave a link in the description below to... I said I use Cream Electronics, because I make them, but as I say, there's so many other manufacturers you can use. I might have a quick look around and see if I can find some 100 volt um, manufacturers. I said maybe LCR do? I'm not sure. Or at the very least, some ones that are smaller and are 
rapid end fill format so that you guys can um, squeeze them in with more finesse than I did. Um, right, see you next time.